Welcome to the Friends with Money podcast, brought to you by Money Magazine, creating financial freedom for Australians since 1999. Please remember that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are general in nature and further independent advice and research based on your personal circumstances should be sought before making an investment decision. Welcome to Friends with Money. This week's guest is from one of Australia's biggest banks and most trusted Australian bank brands, Bendigo Bank. Arun Devadas is the head of cards and is heavily involved in bringing new technologies like mobile payments to Bendigo Bank. And that's what we'll be talking about today, mobile payments and their meteoric rise here in Australia. Thank you for joining me today, Arun. Thanks, Julia. Nice to be with you. Aaron, let's start with COVID-19. We've all been affected by it. What impact has it had on the way that Australians are handling money? And what have you seen in your own bank? Sure, Julia. And I think a lot of us can relate to this because we're all shoppers and we've all lived through the last two years and the impact that the pandemic's had on changing a whole bunch of different ways in which we do things. So if you cast your mind back to, it's a bit hard to do now, but back to February, March last year, and that first wave of panic buying that we saw through the supermarkets, I definitely was in a supermarket at the time when there was no toilet paper and not a lot on the shelves. That was a huge spike in overall consumer spending that we saw initially. Then, as we know, uh, in, in late March and into April, the first, those first round of lockdowns kicked in and we did see that really pronounced fall in spending. It did rebound pretty quickly, though, like within sort of late May, June, and not just because the lockdowns were lifting, but consumers did start to change their behaviours, we did see some changes to that, and I'll just speak to that briefly in a second. So the overall trends that we saw were sort of accelerating a lot of things that we'd been seeing for a while, um, and these are all, again, at you listeners as, as consumers, these are, it's not going to be rocket science news for you, but we did see it all happen. And that is a preference for cards over cash. So ATM withdrawals and the use of cash for retail purchases dropped significantly. It's rebounded a little since then, but it's still on a on a steady decline. Tapping cards over inserting cards and using a pin. So tap and go, you know, Australians have, have loved tap and go for a long time, but it was even more pronounced um, with the pandemic. And you know, you'll, again, you'll re- remember probably the signs in store, uh, of Coles and Woolworths preferring people to tap. That certainly led to, to more people tapping. Debit cards over credit cards as well. So we've seen that trend for a number of years. Overall, a bit of uh, conservatism with the use of, of credit cards as a, a source of consumer finance for spending. But also, credit cards are really popular for travel and holidays. So not a lot of us, in fact, I'd say none of us were doing uh, any travel or holidays. So we saw a big shift uh, to debit card spin. And then the next couple sort of relate to to the topic at hand today, potentially, and that is e-commerce and buying things from home. So again, it's pretty pretty easy to, to think that um, people got online and back spending pretty quickly because rather than going into the shop, they were buying it online. But we also started using things like food delivery services at a rate that we've never used before. And that's, again, another displacement um, of a transaction that may have been cash, may have been card. A lot of those transactions would have happened in store or in in the restaurant paying for takeaway or a restaurant meal itself. Um, And they were then going onto the food delivery platforms and you have to pay with that uh, via a debit or a credit card. The other big category Subscription services, obviously, we're all at home. <laughs> if you had a Netflix subscription, you might have added a Stan and a KO and a Binge and you know all the other names that we're all so familiar with now. And then on top of all of that, uh, mobile wallets soaring in popularity for both the in-store shopping we were talking about, but also that e-commerce as well. So when we talk about mobile payments and you know mobile wallets, um, what exactly are they? How do they work? And are they safe to use? Yeah, absolutely. So what is a mobile wallet? So that's storing your plastic card information into a mobile device and then using that for tap and go transactions. We'll talk about how you can use it 
in other ways in a second. I have a Samsung phone at the moment, so I use a service called Samsung Pay that's available on Samsung phones. Uh, it's an Android phone that also it, it supports Google Pay. I do use that as well. In Melbourne, actually, Google Pay, you can use it um, in the Mikey system. So uh, when we're on uh, public transport down here, which we're not doing so much at the moment, um, it is quite handy to have that there. It's also available on a few uh, what we call wearable devices. So Garmin, some Garmin smartwatches, some Fitbit watches. So Garmin Pay and Fitbit Pay, are another version of a mobile wallet. The most popular mobile wallet at, at Bendigo and in Australia is, is Apple Pay that's available on iPhones and iWatches. So when you're out and about and you're seeing people tap their phones um, on a payment terminal, they're using one of these mobile wallets. That's how that works. The other way in which mobile wallets are becoming more and more popular is what's called in-app payments. So uh, two popular ways in which that works that I've used myself in the last couple of weeks Firstly, back to e-commerce, just buying stuff online. I can't remember exactly what I was buying, but um, in the last couple of weeks, it might have even been a bed or something like that, something as significant as that um, on the Cyber Monday sales, clicking through the shopping cart and then an option at the end is to, to pay with Google Pay. So you click that button and you're not, so just a few clicks in the payment part of the, the transaction is completed and you're not having to, to enter your card number again. And Aaron, can you put several cards into your mobile wallet yes yes in that sense yeah your mobile wallet can be very much like your your physical wallet you can put a debit card a credit card most banks in australia are now supporting mobile wallets so you're, you're able to to put a, a range of cards in there and then at the point of purchase you can flick between the ones that you'd like to use for that particular purchase I guess also at the bank, you had an idea of how long it would take for the take up to come through and yes. you know, obviously accelerated that, as you said. What sort of timing had you thought before people really started to get into the wallets and how long has it actually taken? Yeah, that, it's an interesting question, Julie, because I, I think, and maybe being in the industry, you know, we're very close to it and we thought this is a fantastic innovation that everyone's going to love. And once we implemented it, which is, is now you know five or six years ago, we'd see this amazing growth of people starting to pay with everything with their phones, um, and that didn't happen. It's, it was more of a slow burn of people trying it and then liking it and then using it after that because you know at that point in time, tapping your card was really pretty much as convenient as tapping your phone. But I think. Over time, as more people have tried it, more people have seen other people using it, we have started to see that, you know, that, that classic sort of hockey stick sort of growth. And it's very much a case of once someone's tried it, they realize how convenient it can be and how convenient it can be to always be there with your phone. Everyone's always got their phone these days, that's for sure. But maybe they don't have their wallet um, or maybe they don't want to be carrying a big, big fat wallet with a whole bunch of cards and receipts in it. So we are now seeing that real real spike in popularity and use of uh, mobile wallets. And I guess one of the issues was perhaps a safety issue. So how safe is using it? Yeah, another really good question, Julia, and it is a concern that people have had, but security-wise, the mobile wallet beats plastic. <laughs> it, it certainly does. And the most obvious way that it's more secure is that your phone has got you know, the built-in security mechanisms that everyone's probably pretty familiar with, uh, you know, whether it's a passcode or a biometric credential, which is is your face ID or a thumbprint, um, something like that. All mobile wallets require one of these controls to be on the phone before you can use it. So if you happen to lose your phone uh, at a restaurant or something like that, no, so someone can't pick up the phone and start tapping away with a phone. But if if you do happen to leave your plastic card somewhere, you know, there is, all the banks would like to say, there's a small window, but only, but there's still a window of where that card can be tapped before the fraud is then detected and the card is blocked. So on your phone, that's that's not, not an issue. Secondly, and this is sort of a, a deeper layer of security inherent in the system as well, is your plastic card number is never actually stored on the phone itself. So all my mobile wallets will take your plastic card number and swap it out uh, for what we call a token. 
which is really just another card number that's just for your phone. And the token is used to process the payment back to your account. And the, the card scheme, it's usually the card scheme then swaps out the token card number for your actual plastic card number. So in the very unlikely event in some way that your your phone is compromised in some way, that token can just be swapped out on your device or on your new device and your plastic card is not compromised and open to fraud as well. So it's it's a very secure way to store your credentials. We've all heard those stories about kids who take their parents' phone and rack up bills for yes. iTunes or games and all sorts of yep. other things. How can that be prevented? So, again, another good question that I'm very glad you asked because it is a real issue and it's not just anecdotal. It has a big impact on the industry. The main way, and that's the main way that we can all manage that is not really by mobile wallets per se, but it's really being clear when we're setting up our um, iTunes account or our Google Play account or whatever uh, store matches the device that you're using, that the permissions that you set on that are such that your kids or even yourself can't get um, sucked into to spending when they shouldn't. So, you know, I've got three kids. Uh, they have access to devices. They have access to download stuff from the iTunes store, but we've set up our um, iTunes profile such that it does require uh, either my wife or my um, ID before a purchase can be made through the store. So that that's the main control. I'd certainly encourage all your listeners to to make sure that they've got those that ecosystem set up properly because if it's not, as you say, it's um it is open for for downloading a number of downloading and purchasing a number of different things that can can cost a lot of money. Advice, thank you. Now, what are you expecting to see now that we're opening up a bit and we're traveling a little bit and doing some last minute Christmas shopping and gearing up for the Boxing Day and January sales? Certainly now that we, well, most of us are out of some sort of lockdown and some of us are perhaps having to do a little bit of isolating, but hopefully everyone's out and able to visit um, physical stores before Christmas because we can definitely see that's flowing through in the transaction numbers that people are heading back out to stores as well as we were talking about e-commerce before people are still using e-commerce but you know i think people have just missed that that experience of going out to to stores and the big thing that we've seen pretty much from day one of everyone getting out of lockdown is and everyone i think will know this intuitively um big spend in in hospitality restaurants pubs bars Um, everyone's out there enjoying some time with their friends and spending there so i guess as we're doing that we talked about debit cards versus credit cards before we don't want to be going into christmas with with two high balances on our credit cards that we can't be paying off and also uh well you could be putting your uh credentials into a mobile wallet and be be sure that it's quite a secure way to be be doing that christmas shopping Thank you so much, Arun. Thank you for joining me today on Friends With Money. Thanks, Julia. Nice to talk with you. Thanks for listening to the Friends With Money podcast. For credible, independent and easy to understand financial commentary, visit moneymag.com.au.